6 a.m. and I feel like shit. Just on the way home from a big night out. Still a bit drunk, to be honest. I'm really looking forward to getting home and sleeping this off in my own bed. <sighs> Producer got me a car, which is nice. They normally only get you this when you're on your way to work. <sighs> Bollocks. Welcome to the show. It's the last one in the series, so it's a bit special. And obviously, it's not just me that makes the show. Well, it is my show. My name's in the title. But there are other people involved. I'm just going to go and have a bit of a chat with the crew, the little people. Uh, we're really like a family here at Touch Me. And I'm probably seen as the mother of the group. Well, perhaps more of a very sexy older sister you have slightly inappropriate feelings for. <laughs> Right. Well, thanks for coming in, guys. I just wanted to gather my team here to tell you what a great job you've been doing. I really love you, and I really love your work. Thanks, Kim. Shh! I'm not finished. I mean, I just think you're amazing. I can't believe how lucky I am to have been working with such a bunch of professionals. <laughs> Sorry. The series has been fantastic, but for the last episode, I do want to show the other side of me, you know? I've been to uni, I've read some books, I'm not just a beautiful, hilarious woman with a magnificent, firm yet yielding pair of breasts. <laughs> <sighs> so, with the finale this week, I want to do something a little bit different. Are you with me, my people? Yes. I said, are you with me, my people? Yes. yes. Good. Let us pray. <laughs> cool. Yeah. So did she do that before she did the weakest link? <laughs> <laughs> I'm Trish and I'm completely mad. I am. I'm totally mad. Do you want to see how mad I am? I wore these to my mate's wedding. How mad am I? I'm totally mad! Whoa, Inkerman! <laughs> That's my mate Trish. She's mad, cos all my mates are mad too. That's Steve, he's mental. Yeah! The thing is, we're always doing these really completely mad things. Like, the other night, yeah, we went to McDonald's. And I ordered a burger, only I said without the burger or the bun. And then we just ran off. How mad is that? <laughs> OK, so the tower complements the King of Cups, which means there could be some very interesting developments in your romantic life. Ah, now, before I show you this card, I must just remind you that the cards of the tarot shouldn't be taken literally. They can appear very negative, but what they actually mean is something completely different. All right. <laughs> now, what this actually means is you're going to marry George Clooney. Am I? <laughs> Brilliant. That'd be 60 quid. here getting some ideas for the big finish. I want to dramatise one of my favourite classic novels by Zola or Tolstoy or Balzac. Is that right? Balzac? That's someone's name, is it? Fair enough. Because I do love getting my nose stuck into a good Balzac. Seriously, is that right? Balzac. The film? <laughs> three words. Fifth word is... Hang on. I thought there were only three words. 
It's not a film, it's a book. <laughs> Kama Sutra. Kama Sutra! <laughs> Truth or dare, Jen? Dare! I dare you to snog me. Are you sure? If you're all right with it, I'm all right with it. Wow! You really don't need a man, do you? No, I do not need a man. <laughs> what do you think of that, Dave? Are you totally freaked out? Or are you shocked and turned on? I should have done all that wine. Not after all that beer. <clears throat> Truth or dare, Kaz? Um, dare. I dare you to squeeze my bagel. Oh, you cheeky heart. Ooh. 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 Um, Much better than a man. What do you reckon, Gaz? Now lick my face. Uh, mm, bump my donut. <laughs> Sweet my knickknacks. Ooh. <laughs> uh. Uh. <laughs> Jen, uh. wake up. Have we been here all night? Yeah. Hey. I've got an idea. Wow. Well, we've been down here all night together. For all the lads know, we could have been up to all sorts. Lesbian all sorts. <sighs> they thought we'd been snogging the night away to blow their minds. Imagine if they thought we'd been down here all night. Grinding away. Yeah. <laughs> Let's go and find them and wind them up. Oh, oh my God! I'm shocked and turned on. I'm shocked and turned on at the same time. Oh God! Please don't let it be true. It can't be. Jamie, it's Karen. Yeah, it's true. It's wee wee. <laughs> Full of wee wee. <laughs> Just stepped outside to get a breath of fresh air, gather my thoughts. I'm 30 now, and you get to this kind of age and you realise you can't just be drifting about in life. You've got to really focus and think about what it is you want. I often stand here, for hours sometimes, contemplating life, and I think to myself, what do I want? What would make me happy? What do I want from life? Nice cup of tea and a Kit Kat. Oh. <laughs> and world peace. <laughs> Demi Moore and Ashton Kutcher, yes. Um, Madonna Guy Ritchie. Good. Richard and Judy. Excellent. I'd not thought of that one. Catherine Zeta-Jones and Michael Douglas. No. How many more times? That's unnatural and disgusting. <laughs> You're staying at break, Toby. Huh? Right, 5G. It's time for our regular session of History Comes Alive. Now, this week, we're going to travel back in time, like Doctor Who, to Egypt and the court of Queen Cleopatra. Now, according to this film I saw, Queen Cleopatra had a harem of men to cater to her every need. And according to my research, she went like a bloody train, which she didn't even have in those days, so that's quite impressive. <laughs> so first up, we're going to need some male slaves. Darren, Kevin and Toby, if you'd like to come to the front, please. Now, it was, of course, very hot in Egypt, so you would all be topless. Come on. <laughs> Miss Harper, would you come with us, please? I need to ask you some questions regarding an alleged improper relationship with a pupil. Pupil? You mad? 
I'd lose my job. Oh, goodness me, boys, what are you doing? How inappropriate. Could you come with us, please, Miss Harper? Um, well, carry on, class. I'll be back soon. Wait for me, boys. Blimey, how old are you? You can't be more than 19. It's a song. Six words. You can leave your hat on. <laughs> What's that? I'm not supposed to say out. <laughs> Hiya. <laughs> We're having a day out at the health farm. Is treat. <laughs> we love it here, don't we, babe? <laughs> it's dead relaxing. It's kind of like when you have a wee in a bath. <laughs> you know, all... Oh. <laughs> and all the stars come to these sorts of places. I was reading it in a celeb bag. I think it was A Up or something like that. I'm dead well read these days. His influence. Before I met him, the only book I ever read was the Argos catalogue. <laughs> anyway, I digest. <laughs> So, there's this article about stars and their fitness regimes. I says to him, look at that Madonna. She's banging to that Yoda and all that healthy stuff, like eating salads, right? And for a woman of her age, what she can do is amazing. Not only does she have the body of a 27-year-old Taiwanese waitress, but she can still do the splits without wetting her knickers. <laughs> <laughs> you know, she's really down to earth, that Madonna. She's just like the girls off our old estate. She's always wearing tracksuits. All the kids have different dads and she's got a black baby. <laughs> <laughs> Anyhow, I says, if it's good enough for Madonna, it's good enough for me. So that's why I started coming down here. It's dead posh, this place. Apparently, these face packs are made from the mud off of Mount Kilimanjaro and they're supposed to knock years off you. So last time, I made him put five on. <laughs> it was so funny. It looked like he sat under an elephant. <laughs> it's a shame you can't see his tan, actually. <laughs> we bought a sunbed off of eBay because I've always been a big fan of David Dickinson. Lovely complexion. <laughs> it's called the Volcano 5000 and it's three times hotter than the surface of the sun. <laughs> and that's hotter than Greece. <laughs> I put him on it last weekend. There were no manuals, so it was dead confusing. Anyway, I put it on Nuke. <laughs> <laughs> I tell you, he was so quiet, I forgot all about him. <laughs> Left him like that from Friday till Sunday afternoon. <laughs> well, when I got back, he was so happy to see me. I swear, if he was a dog, he'd have wagged his tail. <laughs> He was dead thirsty, weren't you, baby? <laughs> he survived by licking the condensation off the windows. <laughs> and as for his time, well, let's just say he'd gone in a mini milk and come out a pepperoni. <laughs> time for your massage, Joanna. Oh, that's lovely. He's ever so good. I do like it when it gets in nice and deep. <laughs> well, I found the book I wanted, Jane Austen. It's a classic. And the great thing is, apparently she's dead, so we don't have to pay any royalties. <laughs> to get properly into this piece, I decided to be as authentic to the role as possible in my day-to-day -day life. With food. The most common staple foods of the late 18th century were flour, vegetables and dairy products. And with rest and relaxation. Oh, Mr. Darcy. <laughs> At first I thought the wig was going to be a bit of a hassle, but it turned out to be pretty handy. <laughs> By the time I got to the costume fitting, I really felt like I knew my character inside out. Yeah, um, I think it could be more modest. Be honest, the more demure the better, really. 
That won't be more in keeping with the theme of the piece. Uh, maybe a bonnet or a fan. Oh, and can you get me some knickers? You know I ain't got any. <clears throat> Thanks, Dan. <laughs> get this from then? Uh, apparently Barbara Streisand wore it in Hello Dolly. <gasps> Blimey, that's posh. Do you know, I swear I saw once in the ladies lose in the Arndale Centre. She had great big hands and a massive cock. <laughs> Still, she can carry a tune. <laughs> By the end of the final day of rehearsals, everything had fallen into place to make my vision a reality. OK, so we have a horse and carriage, a musket, a dolly and mangle, a parasol, two stately homes, ten bales of hay, eighteen peacocks, a private lake, and three original paintings by John Constable. Great! Well done. Oh, what about Colin Firth? That was a no, I'm afraid. Get out of my sight. <sighs> Gonna have to have a rethink. People say to me, Jenny, Meeting people on the internet, isn't that just for weirdos? And I say to them, don't be ridiculous. It's a great way to find love. So get in touch if you're into films, eating out and drinking your own piss. <laughs> okay, you're doing really well. Oh, I don't like it. That's it now, nearly there. Now, I'm just going to perform an episiotomy so your perineum doesn't tear. Tear? Man! <laughs> Man! Just having a relaxing bath before the big shoot day tomorrow. I think it's always good to cleanse your mind before you go to bed. Don't worry, you won't see anything. I've sell tape these to my nipples. <laughs> Clip actually used to bathe in asses milk, didn't she? Very good for the skin. I put a drop of semi skimmed in. You can use anything you like. At Christmas, I use Baileys. Once, I had this stuff, when you put it in, it fizzed and made the water go all sparkly. Oof, I tell you, I had glitter places you wouldn't believe. But weeks afterwards, every time I went to the toilet, it was like I dropped a disco ball. Anyway, I'm going to get out now. Don't worry, I'll sellotape the sponge to my lady garden. Carry on, Sergeant. <laughs> Carry on, follow that camel. <laughs> carry on, cabby. <laughs> oh, carry on, dick. <laughs> Sod it, then. It's Casino Royale. <laughs> this is Penelope Chambers. On the surface, she's just an ordinary, mild-mannered, happy young woman in a regular nine-to-five. But she has a secret. <coughs> For when danger calls... Everybody down! Now! I said everybody! OK. I just want the money. Nobody move and nobody gets hurt! Penelope can manipulate her body clock forwards or backwards until she becomes... Premenstrual girl. <laughs> Shit off, you silly bitch. Just take my stapler. For Christ's sake, fucking crap job. I just need a cuddle. Am I glad to see you, premenstrual girl? Don't look at me, I'm all bloaty. I'm like a big fat chocolate whale with four asses. This is the situation. Oh, piss off, tummy hurt. Our man's holding your colleague in the vault. I want to be held. He's threatening to kill her unless he gets a helicopter. <gasps> You've tried talking to him, but he's not playing ball. Do you think you can help? Oh, no, no, that's fine. I'll do it. You just stand there. Fucking men. It's never your responsibility, is it? It only feels like my womb's been stabbed by a bloody meat cleaver. <laughs> can you get me some more chocolate and rub my back? <laughs> I'm not afraid of you, pre-menstrual girl. Is that you making all that bastard noise? You never think of anyone else, do you? I'm sick of it. 
I feel fat and look at you taking hostage. Some skinny bitch with legs up to her ass and tits like Womble's noses. I don't know you should sit for a carpenter. You never think of me, do you? You think I'm fat, don't you? Go on, just say it. You're not fat. You're curvy. Curvy? Oh, great. You think fat, say fat, you prick. This is water retention, you know. I'd like to see you have PMT. I know what you're thinking. You think I'm a sweaty ever with a fat ass. Well, go on, shag her. See if I care. I don't want a shagger. Yeah, you do. You didn't take me off. It's because you think I'm ugly. <laughs> you're not. You're lovely. Honestly. Hold me. <laughs> Got any chocolate? <laughs> <laughs> well, don't you open your hands so I can see them? Oh, no. Oh, no. How can we ever thank you, premenstrual girl? You start by getting out of my fucking face. <laughs> That was fab. Yeah, I really enjoyed it. So, are all Australians that small? The <laughs> <laughs> learning about the mythical Chinese art of feng shui. So now, whenever I speak with someone, I make sure they're facing eastwards. So when we wake together in the morning, and I rise from the warm cocoon of last night's physical and spiritual union, he won't see me putting yesterday's knickers back on. <laughs> Valerie Denton and I'm here to help. It's time for Beauty on a Budget. Now, I look amazing. It's thanks to good genetics and a series of facial exercises developed by my good self that I have the appearance of someone ten years younger than I actually am. I know what you're thinking. How can I look as good as Val Denton? I don't have high cheekbones, a flawless complexion and the intimate knowledge of facial calinetics that she does. In fact, I look like shit. <laughs> Anna. Hello. Hello. Oh, bless her. You must be beside yourself to be out of the home. I bet all the other old dears are gathered around the telly, just waiting for you to be on, eh? Can you remember how old you are, dear? I'm, I'm 32. Good God. <laughs> I'm sorry, Anna. I just assumed from your haggard face and the smell of Dettol that you were much older. Don't worry, I'll make you look like the young woman you allegedly are. You could buy my DVD, Gurn Yourself Gorgeous. But I can tell by the way you dress that you can't afford it. Ah. Oh. Mine's gone. <laughs> so, we need an instant and inexpensive facelift. Normally, in such a severe case of pre-aging, I would use a nail gun. <laughs> but, as Anna's skin is thin enough to spit through, we're going to have to opt for a method that will leave slightly less chance of epidermal tearing, bleeding and eventual death. <laughs> My old friend, sticky tape. <laughs> you can do the lot with this. Watch. <laughs> Turkey neck, gone. <laughs> Nose sorted, ears <laughs> pinned. for the piece of resistance. <laughs> A fuller, more sensual, more youthful pout. <laughs> and there we have it. Ten years younger in a matter of seconds. <laughs> Hang on, this bit's coming down. Nail gun! <laughs> oh. <laughs> Next time... Breast augmentation. <laughs> Uh, 
they're ready for you now, Miss Taylor. No, no, call me Karen. But yesterday you now, said... Now, now, we're all one big happy family here. I'll be with you in a minute, George. It's Greg. Whatever. <laughs> well, it's the end of the series. Time for the pièce de résistance. If there's one word I'd like this series and myself to be remembered for, it's class. Right. Chop, chop. Let's fuck this pig. <laughs> <laughs> Comedy to come next up on BBC Three as we whack out our usual two pints of lager and a packet of crisps nightly double bill. And then that is followed later by our little Neighbours special that we like to call Neighbours Revealed. <laughs> <laughs>